All right, let's get right into it. Today, we're talking about a really cool way to make AI a whole lot faster. Forget just using one giant supercomputer, we're talking about building a specialized dream team of different machines that work together to get you answers at some truly incredible speeds. You've totally seen this happen, right? You ask a chatbot a question and there's this pregnant pause. You're waiting, waiting, and then boom, the answer just starts flying out word after word super fast. Well, that little pause and stream thing isn't a glitch. It's actually a clue to how these things work. And it's the secret to how we can make them so much faster. So that whole experience is actually measured by two different things. First, there's what's called time to first token or TTFT for short. That's the fancy term for that initial pause before you see the very first word. Then you've got tokens per second or TPS. And that's exactly what it sounds like how fast all the rest of the words, or tokens, stream onto your screen. Making both of these numbers better is basically the holy grail for AI performance. So why are there two different speeds? I mean, why isn't it just one smooth process? Well, it's because behind the scenes, the AI is actually performing two completely different jobs, one right after the other. And each of those jobs hits a different kind of bottleneck. And that, right there, is where things get really interesting. This table breaks it all down perfectly. First, you have the pre-fill phase. Think of this as the AI's thinking time. It takes your entire prompt and processes it all at once. Because it's doing a ton of math across all of your words, it becomes compute bound. It's limited by pure calculation speed. And that is your wait time, your TTFT. Then it shifts gears to the decode phase. This is the typing part. It generates the response one piece at a time and for each new word, it has to grab data from memory. That makes it memory bound. It's all about how fast it can access data. And that, of course, determines your streaming speed, your TPS. So this leads to a really elegant idea. If you have two different jobs, one that needs raw math power and another that needs lightning fast data access, why would you use a single machine that's just kind of okay at both? The real solution is to build a dream team and give each task to a specialist that's built for it. And here are the specialists for a dream team. On one side, you have the NVIDIA DGX Spark. This thing is an absolute monster at crunching numbers with around 100 teaflops of performance. Then on the other side, you've got the Apple Mac Studio M3 Ultra. Its superpower, a staggering 819 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth. That's three times more than the DGX. So you have two powerhouses with completely different strengths. The best way to think about it is like this. The DGX Spark is a master mathematician. It's built to just tear through huge calculations at unbelievable speeds. The Mac Studio, on the other hand, is a master librarian. It can find and retrieve massive amounts of information from memory almost instantly. And once you see them that way, the strategy becomes pretty obvious. It just clicks, right? You give the compute heavy prefill phase to your mathematician, the DGX Spark, to absolutely crush that initial wait time and get a super fast TTFT. Then you hand off the memory intensive decode phase to the librarian, the Mac Studio, to get a ridiculously high TPS. It's the perfect division of labor. Okay, but this dream team idea has one big hurdle. After the mathematician does its work, it has to pass its notes over to the librarian. This data, it's called the KV cache, is basically the AI's short-term memory for the chat. So the question is, how do you hand off that memory without creating a brand new delay that just wipes out all the speed you just gained? The obvious way to do it, what we'd call the naive approach, would be to let the DGX Spark finish the entire prefill job, then transfer the whole result over the network, and then let the Mac Studio start the decode part. But that step in the middle, the transfer, that's a huge delay. It's like having a relay race where the runners stop for a chat before they pass the baton. It just kills your momentum. But the really clever solution is a trick called pipelining. Instead of waiting for the whole job to finish, the GGX Spark works on just the first layer of the model. The second it's done with that piece, it starts sending it over to the Mac Studio. And here's the brilliant part. While that first piece of data is traveling over the network, the GDX is already working on the next layer. By overlapping the communication with the computation, you can pretty much hide the network delay completely. It's genius. Now, this isn't just a cool theory. This whole setup was actually put to the test with a real model. And the results, well, the results are kind of stunning. Let's actually put some numbers on the board. Okay, check this out. The Mac Studio by itself took over six seconds. 
the super powerful DGX Spark got that down to about 4.3 seconds. But look what happens when they team up. The Dream Team gets to use the lightning fast 1.47 second prefill from the DGX and the super quick 0.85 second generation from the Mac. The total time? Just 2.32 seconds. It literally takes the best part from each machine and sticks them together. So what does that actually mean? It means by teaming up these two specialists and using that clever pipelining trick, the system got a 2.8 times speed up over just using the Mac Studio. That's not just a small improvement. That is a massive leap in performance. Now, you might be thinking this all sounds incredibly complicated to set up by hand. And you would be absolutely right. But that's where the last piece of this puzzle comes in, a smart software system that basically acts as the conductor for this whole hardware orchestra. That conductor is called XO 1.0. It's an orchestration system built to take a whole collection of different or heterogeneous computers and make them work together like they're one single incredibly powerful machine. It's the brain behind this entire operation. So what does XO actually do? Well, it automatically discovers all the hardware you have connected and figures out their strengths. You know, who's the mathematician and who's the librarian. Then it intelligently plans out where to run each phase of the job. And most importantly, it automatically manages that complex pipelined data transfer to hide the delay. It basically makes this whole dream team concept a simple push button reality. And this quote really just wraps it all up perfectly. We're moving beyond the limits of what a single computer can do. The future of AI performance isn't about finding one perfect box. It's about building these smart, cooperative clusters where different specialists all team up. So the next time you experience that pause and stream, you'll know it's a tale of two very different tasks and the key to a much, much faster future.